What are you still doing? I, exactly. I'm a lot. A lot has changed. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just survived. I'm just here. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm, I. I don't know if you follow me or. I hate trucking. I absolutely hate trucking. I want nothing to do with trucking. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta change my my Instagram name from Sex and Mother Truck. I gotta change something else. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> you you got to do the whole whole rebrand, yeah, revamp, revamp, revamp rebrand, <laughs> all of that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. When we first talked the first time, was you driving or what was you doing when we talked the first time? Yeah, I was driving. Um, when we first talked. I was driving. I had some drivers. I was trying to build a trucking company and all that to bring that. But I mean, in fact, that was like in 2020 or 21, like 2021. Oh, damn, we talked. That we talked when it was good. Yeah, when every, everything was up. When everything know? was <laughs> where everything was good. But now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to make sure because like so you do have your CDL and you was a driver, right? Hey, does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? I just made a fresh pot of coffee. Does anybody want coffee? Yeah, yeah, I just got home. Um I just got home a few days ago. I haven't been home a week yet. I'm just getting home. Okay, you know, but after at, the holidays and all yeah. that. Yeah, okay. So I'm I'm just trying to catch I'm just trying to catch my mind up to what went on then and then all the way down to now. So back then you had your own or you tried to build your own company. But did you have your own did you have your own authority back then or or what? No, nope, I never had my own authority. I always I always do um, third party CPLs always use third party, which which is pro- part of the problem because you can't you don't have full control and all that stuff. But 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 I still see I will always use like if I ever got back into it, I would still always use third party carriers because I would have to protect my own authority, especially after everything that I witnessed. Like these drivers would have shut down my authority, you know. <laughs> but um, but that's all. So, yeah. Is it safe to say that? That you was part of the turnkey business style back then. I don't know. I don't know if it's safe to say that because I don't know exactly what that is. Okay, so turnkey is is investing with somebody else that can that can get your drivers, that can get your truck, and run the business for you. But you're you're is you are an investor. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's something to that d- dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. so I almost invested with Conference Conference One Eighty, that kick, but I never, I didn't fully because I I had yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, so something like that. I was trying to get take the easy way out, you know. <laughs> I ain't want to do no work. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And all all of it just went to shambles. Yeah, and that's that's what basically turnkey is about is you quote unquote not doing the work but kind of reaping the benefits if the benefits right. was 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 there. But as as things change, the dynamics of trucking has changed. The economy the, the economy the change and everything. Right. Right, right. And, right. and yeah. Drivers so unreliable. It just it was just a lot. Yeah. You got up out of it before it became a, a huge problem for you. No, I got up out of it because it became a huge problem for me. <laughs> basically is what I said. Just basically, um, too many hands in the pot, drivers being unreliable. So I don't know exactly so the turnkey, I'm kinda of familiar. I know I checked out that one program and I know I checked out another program. Some guys down in Florida was like give them like fifty grand. But what I what I what I did, I told you before, um, I was able to lease trucks. So I so leasing trucks and then putting drivers in them. I did not. I never owned the trucks. Um, those lease payments was about two grand a week. But 
the drivers, if they're not producing the correct amount of overhead to cover the truck lease, the fuel, and their own pay, and this and that, you just you're just in debt every week. You know, you're just you're just in debt, and by drivers <laughs> concerned with themselves, like um, I don't have so many personal problems. Like I guess I didn't vet my drivers enough, and then um, me personally, I overpaid my drivers because I came from a I didn't come in as a business woman. I came in from a driver's perspective and I was so focused on like, damn, this is a lick. Let me put drivers on. <laughs> so let me let me help y'all make more money than what we were making as thirty cent per mile or something. But then it was it was it wasn't good as a business sense because then where is my profit? Because I gave the drivers seventy five percent of the truck's earning. So how how do I survive off of twenty five percent and I'm responsible for everything? You know, so it just it was just a bad business decision because I <laughs> didn't have any um uh knowledge or experience, you know, I'm just, you know, jumping in uh head first um with this uh the opportunity or whatever and then I was able to put the trucks under like I said third party carrier and I was just like wow they were managing things for me and helping things but then when that settlement comes out and they hit me with uh two thousand dollars in debt or thirty five hundred dollars in debt or a, a driver gets in an accident and is a twenty I mean it just it was all on me. <laughs> so it just it was so overwhelming and then the drivers um were quitting um having personal problems and um a driver got the truck got one of the trucks confiscated trying to um haul freaking uh foreigners you know my fact one of the trucks is still in uh with the border control to this day but anyways um (laughs) Oh, just a lot. I don't know. Just, oh, just a, just, a, just a lot. And then I then I end up. So I was trying to get out of leasing. I purchased a truck. So where you going? Hey, Tony, I got to meet John down the restaurant. You fucking cocksucker. OK, so hold on right quick. Let's 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 bring it back, because this this is a story. This is a story of of trial, tribulation and and try to be successful while at the same time learning that all of this is just not fruitful. So you you tried to get the drivers, you tried to come in on the leasing front, but you tried to do it by going to like the dealership and leasing the trucks from the dealership by getting a contract with them. And then you tried to put drivers at least that you thought was reliable in them while try to while try to be like well hey let let me give you a better percentage here because i came from that that driver side so let me try to give you a better percentage so that we can both get this money but even but even with that you tried to give give these drivers a good percentage a good a good foundation they still fucked you yeah. So yeah. So I was I would say yeah, agree to that. With these drivers that you try to get, you you already admit that you didn't do a good job in vetting them. But how did you come? How did you come across them in the first place? Most of my drivers, um, social media, um, indeed, um, social media, indeed, word of mouth. But <laughs> yeah, social media really word of mouth. Indeed. Yeah. Do you do, before I go into my next question, do you feel that social media itself kind of tarnish the trucking industry? Um I have to think about that. Yeah, you know, so with social media, I think it portrayed a facade. So, um, especially with so many people jumping into it and thinking it was just a, a quick get rich scheme or like made it so easy. People don't don't understand. It is hard work, dedication is is time. Even myself, you know, I I, I was victim too. I I didn't know how much hard work and dedication it was either that I really took myself. You know, it's kind of more easier said than done. You know, I mean, it sounds good. Like you you got a truck, you got a driver, 
they're paying them good. Everybody's eating. Like, why why can't it work? But then you do, uh, well, you know, certain things happen, accidents, breakdown. I mean, there's just, just a lot, you know. There's a lot that comes with it. Okay. And then and then <clears throat> and then people having personal problems. Drivers aren't robots. You know what I'm saying? Where emotional beings like trucking is not a physical job, but it's a mental and emotional job. It's mentally stressful. It's hard being away from your family. Not even knowing what you you can't even predict it because some days you might have a perfect week, something might happen, and you might be stuck in the shop for two days and it messes up your paycheck. I mean, it's kind of hard to balance. Like it takes it takes a lot, and I and I always had that understanding. Um, but that was also um a down point, like feeling too sorry for drivers, and I think. By me kind of having more sympathy, it kind of like tarnished that relationship because I don't know, I don't know what happened, you know, I just don't know what happened. Um, and then, of course, you can make social media <laughs> because I said because some of my drivers came on social media, and then when they're seeing, seeing it was in comments. Like, if I'm doing my thing, I'm traveling. They're like, <laughs> it got to be a hate like, idea. Like, wait, she, she, just, she just eating off of us. I'm like, damn, how y'all, how y'all think I'm just eating off y'all? But it's a team, work team effort. I'm helping y'all. Y'all helping me. We all eating together. But goddamn, if I'm giving you 75%, how much more do you want? 100%? You want the whole goddamn company? <laughs> they look. They, they looking at your pockets. They, right, they, they like looking at your pockets. Like, oh, so with with, oh, with yeah, that, so that's where I feel like you <laughs> with with that said, with that said, you got drivers that's coming into your DMs. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. <laughs> You're on your Instagram, you promoting your trucking business, and then you got all types of guys. That just coming in. I, I just think those guys is just thirsty because you're a beautiful woman and and you pretty, you sexy, all like that. But you got these same guys coming into your comment session talking about pick me, pick me, I'll drive for you, I'll drive for you, and this, that, and the third. You 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 say, hey, okay, I'll give you a chance, but it'd be those same guys. That be messing you up, right? Exactly. Then some of them, which I, which I now realize in hindsight, some of them probably came aboard thinking they would to meet me or get next to me. But I suggest my business out of state. I send you to where you need to go, and you you never really meet me. You might talk to me, but I don't have to necessarily be there with you to conduct business. You know what I'm saying? So so that that fire too. I know one person literally flew them out and they realized they weren't meeting me they 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 didn't even take the trip that way that had to, that was a waste of a four hundred dollar plane ticket i stopped um flying drivers out after that i said you gotta you gotta fly yourself out and i'm <laughs> will reimburse you yeah so in the beginning where everything was kind of like popping off and and you were still uh learning the industry and the aspect of it you was bringing drivers out you was like hey i'll fly you out i'll i'll bus you out or whatever but you realized that yeah i threw, I threw everybody i didn't even put nobody on my yeah but but you realized afterwards where everything was coming where where everything was going south you said bump all that man yeah so now i have a new perspective now i have perspective as for drivers i have a perspective for owners i have a perspective for dispatchers i have a perspective I just have a perspective for the different um, avenues of the industry. Like, it kind of goes hand in hand. We're all, we're, what we have to understand is we're all on the same team. But everybody in this industry, they're just out for themselves, me, 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 like vultures. Like, it's no, it's no teamwork. It's no togetherness. It's no unity. That's, that's, the, that's the biggest turnoff for me within the trucking industry. And I, and I just can't be a part of it because that's not my personality like like i said they pocket watching they they pocket watching your 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 money and then on on top of that 
like I said before, you're a beautiful woman, you're a, you're a sexy woman and everything, and you're out here trying to try to run the business, but these thirsty dudes, these thirsty truck drivers thinking they're going to come in, not only trying to cipher your money, but try to but try to get in your pants at the same time. Right. Yes. Um, not, not all. I do have, I, I, came, I had a, a few good drivers and I still have relations with, like, you know, um, but yeah, but yeah, a, a lot of them, you know. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so let's let's get to the. Jesus Christ, Mister, you okay in there? Oh, my. oh, oh. You all right? You run oh. from me, you fucking cocksucker. Where's my fucking money? Border. What? What happened with that? We, you had you had a driver that that tried to to bring illegals over. What what happened with that? Right now, it's the guy, the driver's still in jail, and they still have the truck, and they're still on investigation. All I know is I I got a call um, saying that the truck was um, taken, and um, what happened from from the <laughs> from his I don't know from his brother or whatever. But um, we all I know is the truck is they we don't have a truck back, and the guy is still in jail. And he said he 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 was like he didn't know how. At first, I felt sorry for him because I, I he stopped me because he was such a quiet, nice young guy. Um, he said he don't know how the immigrants got on his own truck. <laughs> and then we found out he had about sixteen of them, and it was in in, in the inside of his goddamn cab, like. Okay, I said, at first I was like, okay, maybe they got in his trailer. Cause, you know, they snuck in the trailer. He didn't take the trailer. Or maybe they jumped on top. But he was caught with them inside of his day cab. I mean, the, the, not the day cab, the sleeper. So um, that's still an undergoing investigation because that has been now about four or five months. And he still is he's still waiting the truck and he's still in jail. So this is an ongoing. So how long ago this happened? Um, it's been about four, about four months, about four months. Um, I have to, I would have to sit with the, the um the article. Wow, that's crazy. So he was coming. So where he was, he was down at the Texas border. He was down in Laredo, Texas. Laredo, Texas. Laredo. Um, it happened down there. I guess he was going through the um, border patrol, and he said he was trying to rush them. And I guess he made the officers suspicious or something. I don't. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Expected his uh, vehicle, but the crazy part is, I think they can see through it. Can't they see through it? Yeah, they got they got some Etsway machine thing. Yeah, they said all. They said everybody come. was all yeah. on top of each other under blankets. Wow. I mean, I heard of a story a while back, but I don't this th that probably might have been a different uh, driver because they they stopped him on the road, but you say yours your guy got stopped at the border patrol. Right. Yeah. Wow. So he yeah. went he went down to Laredo, hooked up with a with 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 a with a some amigos. Some amigos. And they 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 offer him some money, and he you know. just and he just he sacrificed his CDL and your reputation for the truck just to bring them where, like out of Texas. Right, I know, right? I, I, I guess so. Wow, that's crazy. So that's that's the story that I heard. Wow, that's crazy. So, but it's it's always the quiet ones, right? You you didn't even expect that. From him. As a matter of fact, it was, it was um, in September. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Cause I, I, I just, you know, this, um, this judgment, you know, this, this, this judgment. I thought he was a, a quiet, nice young kid, I mean, guy, you know, young man, responsible, you know. <laughs> so I guess. It's been a minute since we talked, and. I, I guess a lot of things have had changed since then. What 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 have what have come to fruition? Well the funny 
part is, the funny part is, <clears throat> I got to like so sometimes when I when I say because I. I thought social media, I don't live for social media. Like, social media is not my thing. Like, it took me a long time to get on social media, and I'm not really on it. So even to, like, people listening or whatever, people have to forgive me. I don't always check my messages. I don't always reach out because I'm not on social media. Like, sometimes if I get on, I might scroll through a couple of videos and jump off. But um, I don't I don't post everything about my life. I'm, like, a private person as well. Um, but, it's, but people do be watching and pay attention and people say like, well, I thought you was doing this or I thought you was doing that, but shit happens, life happens, shit changes, you know what I'm saying? That, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I, I just like, for me, trucking, like if anybody ever had a conversation with me and you would say, you a boast about being a trucker, I will always say, I am not a trucker. I just happen to drive trucks. Meaning, trucking is just not a job, it's actually a lifestyle. And for you to laugh in this industry, you really have to be passionate about it. I was never passionate about it. I, I thought I was going to get out here, get my CDL, make a hundred grand, and, and get out. <laughs> but I got stuck. I got stuck into trucking. And then obviously learning a little bit more. I was like, oh, okay, well, now I see this money to be made, but I'm I, um, trucking. I was never passionate about um, trucking. I just and now going through everything I went through with trucking and especially I still like I said I just got home I I've been driving because I always get on the truck get off the truck because you it is addicting because you know do two three thousand four five thousand dollar paycheck uh or check you know if if you can't get to that home but but being in debt or having something break down and you got to come eight nine ten well, I mean, it hit different too. So basically, um, I'm just I'm a mom first. I'm just I'm just happy to be home. I, I just want to be all about my kids. Um, for those who know, like sexy mother trucker, I'm a mom, and my my kids rode on the truck with me for a couple of years. Like I had my kids on the truck, but that's unfair to them. I'm just ready to like move on to different business ventures and um, be a mom. That's, that's my biggest thing. So technically, as of right now, as of 2024, catch up, you're a company driver, pretty much. Um, yeah, I um, I'm looking, I'm, I, I'm looking to become a company driver. I'm looking for a job right now, and they won't. I cannot get a job. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I have a clean record. Um, they say they want you to have. I live in Houston. They want you to have court experience. I don't have court experience. Or they want me. They had, I had um, backed up a few times. Some tests, and I, I guess I didn't back up fast enough um, because my trucking career, you know, I team drove and I was probably enabled because my co driver would back up a lot for me. You know, you know how men are. Um, <laughs> so I'm probably not the best backer upper, but then. Me even being a solo driver, I, I I can't back up. I don't. I take you know. I get in there. I don't hit anything. I'm very um safe. I think that's what matters. But I just I don't know. I'm having a hard time getting a local job. Um, so that's my goal is to to work local while I'm pursuing other business ventures. Okay. Oh, that's not the, is that the right? Okay. So that's my goal right there. Put that coffee down. Truck driver, formerly known as Sexy Mother Trucker. <laughs> oh, you say you got you got to do a whole rebranding of the of the name. You don't even want to go by it, go by that no more. So we just gonna call you Truck Driver from now on. <laughs> no, you cannot call me Truck Driver. Look, I'm, I was like, man, should I say keep on trusting, keep on trusting, me, keep on moving, <laughs> keep on moving. But no, I'm, um, I don't, I don't know. Um, Chuck, so, so sexy mother Chuck, uh, I have to put some thought behind that. Um, I have to put some thought behind that. Um, I don't know because, like I said, social media isn't everything to me, but I do have, you know, some of a following, but I think people follow me. Because I am Danielle, so you know I'm just I'm just Danielle, but um I don't know I don't know I don't know what I what I have 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know what I have going on. Like I like when I like so social media for me is like a um a vision board. So like when I join social media, I like to see positivity on my timeline. I try to spread positivity. I try to spread kind words, kind thoughts, especially for my people and especially for black men. Because I like have a deep sound like deep love for black men like i don't know but anyways um yeah so that's what i'm about so just positivity um so yeah so um but yeah so that's that's what's going on 2024 just begun um i just got home um new day for new year so we're gonna see what happens um like i said i was looking for a company job but um I haven't been able to get it. I don't know if that's God's way of telling me he has something else for me in store. Um, I don't know. I'm open to new business ventures. I'm open to um, a new career change. Um, I'm just, I, I, you know, I get all that I could possibly give it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good. Like I said, when I, once I figure things out, um, I'll, yeah, I'll keep you posted to be updated. Like I said, um, I don't know what the future has in store for me right now. All I know is just I'm just happy to be home. I'm happy to have survived chucking. You know, I had some near life death experiences. You know, chucking hasn't been easy. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy, bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.